Okay, welcome to the Drug Names Decoded Updated How to Study Pharmacology video section. And this again is meant to augment uh, the book, not replace it. Uh, the main focus of this is pronunciation and a couple of tips and tricks to help you uh, remember some of these medications. Uh, the chapter 5, the nervous system, is a big chapter. There's a lot of drugs here, and hopefully by grouping them, it'll be a lot easier to remember what they're for. The first group, uh, the sedative hypnotics, then the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the tricyclic antidepressants, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, the benzodiazepines, the ADHD medications, the bipolar disorder meds, the schizophrenic, schizophrenia medications, the antiepileptics, medications for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, vertigo motion sickness, muscle relaxation, and local anesthetics. One thing I do want to mention, an SSRI, an MAOI, an ADHD, those are always pronounced out, so you always say the letters. Unlike something like an N said, in which you say the letter N and then pronounce the word said, these are initialisms and you actually want to use the letters there. Well, let's start with our first one, S Zopiclone. And we see a couple of things here. First, the S lets us know it's the S isomer, but also that clone is the stem. Now, it's a stem in the suffix position, but it doesn't really help us because there aren't that many other drugs in the class. And it's easier to look at this brand name and say Lunesta and to think of Luna for moon and then Est to rest. We also just call these sleeping pills in the vernacular. The next one is very similar. We want to look at the brand name instead of the generic to remember what it's for. So Roserum, Rose, and Doze go together, and then Rem for Rem sleep. Now Melteon is a stem, but it doesn't necessarily help us when there aren't a lot of other drugs in the class. The next drug, Trazodone. If you look in the middle, you see Z-O-D, which backwards would be doze, so that's one good way to remember that it helps patients sleep. And that's Desiril. Zolpidem is Ambien, and that Pidem is the proper stem, but Ambien, which is just one letter short of Ambient, a very calm, soothing environment, is a lot easier to remember it's for sleep. Citalopram is Celexa. And this is our first selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or SSRI. And this is quickly followed by s citalopram which is Lexapro. Again, that S isomer is supposed to work a little bit better. And we can't use the SC together because we would just pronounce it as S, and it would sound just like the generic for Celexa, citalopram. That's why the S needs to be there to add that additional syllable. Fluoxetine is Prozac and this might be familiar to you. In terms of trying to remember to spell them, it's easiest to remember this stem, oxetine, and then just remember that there's an FLU before it. Just like peroxetine, that's O-X-E-T-I-N-E -E at the end, and then par, P-A-R, as the beginning of that word, and that's Paxil. Sertraline is Zoloft, and that lofts your spirits. That's an easy way to remember that one. Venlafaxine is not an SSRI, but an SNRI, selective, so I'm sorry, serotonin, norepinephrine, reuptake inhibitor, and this is Effexor, and you can think this is effective for antidepression. Amitriptyline is a tricyclic antidepressant, so where the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are named after their neurotransmitter, this is named after the shape of the molecule. Tricyclic means we have three rings, and we're talking organic chemistry rings, not circles. And this elevates your mood, so Elevil. Isocarboxazid is Marplan. That's an MAOI, or monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Phenylzine is Nardil, another MAOI. And Tranylcypromine Parnate is another MAOI. I have a couple tips on how to remember these, but uh, these might take a bit of repetition. Alprazolam, or Alprazolam, I've heard it both ways, is Xanax, and you can think it X's out anxiety. Those letters are in there, in the brand name. I do want to caution, though, that I've seen a lot of videos and note cards that have LAM, just L-A-M, as the stem, and that's not correct. It's 
Azalam or Azapam. One is used by the United States Adopted Names Council, one is used by the World Health Organization. The next drug, clonazepam, is clonopin, another benzodiazepine. And then diazepam is Valium. And hopefully you see that diazepam, almost the entire word, is there in benzodiazepine. That helps you know that it's in that class. Lorazepam, again with the azepam ending, is Ativan. Then we go on to the ADHD medications. First we have two stimulant medications that are scheduled C2 by the United States uh, Drug Enforcement Agency. Two means that you can only get one prescription uh, for it. It's highly addicting. It's dexmethylphenidate, which is focalin. And where before we saw S for left, this dex uh, means right. But more importantly, dexmethylphenidate is different than our next one, which will be methylphenidate. But look at this brand name, Focalin. Meth dexmethylphenidate helps an ADHD patient focus. Methylphenidate is Concerta, so we think of concentrate and the same thing. It's a stimulant C2. Then we go on to a tricky medication, which is atomoxetine or Stratera. Now that oxetine was used earlier in an SSRI, but this is not an SSRI. This is a non-stimulant ADHD medication, so just be careful with this one. Lithium is lithobid. Lithobid was named after it being given twice a day, and this is for bipolar disorder. It's a simple salt, and when you think of the periodic table, it's going to be on the left-hand side, right, with sodium. So the body can't really tell the difference. So a patient who takes in too much salt, the body will try to get rid of the sodium, as if eating too many chips or something like that. And it'll also get rid of the lithium. So it's important that these patients have a very consistent sodium intake. Chlorpromazine is our next medication, which is Thorazine. This is for schizophrenia. It is a typical antipsychotic. That's also synonymous with first generation antipsychotic. And this is low potency. Low potency means we're going to have increased sedation, but likely lower extrapyramidal symptoms, as opposed to the next one, which is haloperidol, which is Haldol. This is also for schizophrenia, and it's a typical antipsychotic, and it's a high-potency medication, which means you're going to have less sedation and increased uh, extrapyramidal symptoms uh, relative to chlorpromazine. Then we go to a next class, which is olanzapine, or Zeprexa. This is for schizophrenia as well, but this is an atypical antipsychotic, which is just another way of saying a second-generation antipsychotic medication. Generally, these have lower extrapyramidal symptoms, but you're going to see increased metabolic effects, weight gain, diabetes, and I'm not being specific to this drug, rather to the atypicals. Another atypical is quetiapine, which has quiet in it so if you think of those delusions and things like that that come from schizophrenia to quiet those uh, quetiapine uh, works pretty well for that and then Seroquel you see the quell in there to quell is to calm down as well Risperidone is Risperdal this is another atypical and then we go on to our anti-epileptics <clears throat> there are three traditional ones Carbamazepine, which is Tegretol, Divalproix, which is Depakote, and Phenytoin, which is Dilantin. Those are the three traditionals. In my class, the two newer drugs both have GAB in it, which tells you it has to do with GABA, the neurotransmitter, but not all uh, newer antiepileptics have that GAB. But gabapentin is Neurontin, and pregabalin is Lyrica. So Neurontin you can think of as neuro and some kind of control over that neuro uh, issue the patient is having, uh, which in this case is epilepsy. Uh, but it's also used uh, for certain uh, nervous disorders. And pregabalin you can think of with Lyrica as now this firing or misfiring of the neurons now goes to more of a lyric beat and uh, it's calming down uh, this epilepsy. Uh, Dunepazil is Aricept, 
uh, and this is for Alzheimer's. You can use the A to remind you for Alzheimer's, as well as think is when you have better perception, then uh, somebody who is forgetting uh, is going to be doing better than they were. Memantine is Nemenda, and that Nemenda actually has to do with the type of drug it is. It's an NMDA. And then we move on to Parkinson's. So levodopa, carbidopa, uh, this is our standard. It's a combination medication known as Cinemet. And we see dopa in both, which means it has to do with the dopamine neurotransmitter. But what I want you to know is that levodopa is a precursor to the dopamine, but can't get through the blood-brain barrier. And what carbidopa does is it protects this levodopa from being broken down, but carbidopa has no inherent uh, value as a medicinal on its own. Selegiline is for Eldapril, again for Parkinson's. And while not only the elderly get Parkinson's, the incidence is certainly higher. And you can think of ELDE -E as Parkinson's being a disorder that is often found in the elderly. Moving on to vertigo and motion sickness, we see meclizine, which is antivert, a great brand name, antivertigo. Scopolamine is transderm scope, which literally means trans across derm skin, and you're taking scopolamine and putting it across. This has anticholinergic effects, so you will see some dry mouth and things like that. Cyclobenzaprine is for muscle relaxation, and we can see that brand name to flex, or actually to, to give you more flexion so that you're not as tight. Carisoprodol also causes muscle relaxation, and that's soma. And you can think of somne, which is the Latin word to sleep, and how soma lets the muscles relax, not necessarily sleep, but it will make patients tired. And then our last two medications are both local anesthetics. One thing to note is that it's very rare that a medication works on axonal conduction, but local anesthetics do. Benzocaine, and we see this cane stem, lets us know that it is a local anesthetic, is anbisol, and that it's an ester. Well, what does that mean? It's an organic chemistry term, and the only real thing that you need to know is that benzocaine when injected has many more adverse effects than lidocaine, which is an amide, A-M-I-D-E.